Hey, good morning, and uh, welcome to the huddle. We uh, started Friday and uh, began really investigating this miracle of Jesus in John chapter 9 yesterday as we went through Act 1, where this man who was born blind, whom the disciples asked who sent he or his parents because they believed that either he had sinned in a former life and this was the consequence or his parents had sinned and this was the consequence but Jesus says neither but this man's infirmity is going to bring about uh, the glory of God on display Jesus spits uh, on some mud puts it on the man's eyes tells, tells him to go and wash he washes sight comes to his eyes and he's questioned about who did this and where he is and he says this man called Jesus did this. Where is he? I don't know. And so we left it off yesterday by realizing this man was still somewhat in the dark. And so now we want to continue with the story in Act 2, and let's go to verses 13 through 18. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was the Sabbath. Of course, this is the day of rest. This is the last day of the week. Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How could a sinner do such miraculous signs? So they were divided. Finally, they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. And the man replied, He is a prophet. And the Jews still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son, they asked? Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that he can now see? And here's the two things they answered. We know he is our son, and we know he was blind. So what comes next after what we discussed yesterday are really three laughable cross-examinations by the Pharisees. First they question the blind man, then his parents, and then the blind man again. You know, to stand before this esteemed council in their chambers had to be a very frightening experience for this man who just moments ago was a beggar begging for whatever people would hand off, and now he stands before uh, the Jewish leaders of his religion. Yet there's some subtle humor along with this tragic reality and it pervades these dialogues and the dignity of the Pharisees and their ruffled attempt to prove that this miracle didn't happen. In this first interview, the Pharisees, who majored in minors and minored in majors, pounced on the fact that Jesus had made mud on the Sabbath while forgetting that he, this was a compassionate act. You see, they cared more for their man-made regulations than they cared for people and Jesus would often point this out, and it would be illustrated many times in the gospel, um, how they cared more about regulation than they cared about the hearts of people. That's why Jesus would say, you stray down a gnat while swallowing a camel. Still, some of them were, were um, intrigued by the idea that there's no way a man could do such wonders if he was a sinner. God would not allow it, right? There were times when Jesus demonstrated the true value and purpose of the Sabbath, um, and the purpose was that it benefited man, and, but not for man to be chained to a legalistic regulation. And the Pharisees were so blinded by their tradition and by their determination to defend their traditions that they were unable to see God's truth exclaimed on Sabbath, that blind people can see, that deaf people can hear, that lame people can walk, that those with demon possessions can be healed of their possession. They missed completely missed the light of Jesus because of the darkness of their pride. The Pharisees turned to this blind man for his opinion on the matter. Isn't it interesting that these learned men are um, ignorant of what happened, so they turn to this you know, supposedly ignorant man to explain things. You know, When you have experienced the healing touch of Jesus, it requires testimony. So in this wondrous excitement of new sight, the man um, expands his view of and understanding of Jesus and he proclaims that he is a prophet. So this man is progressing along on his journey of faith. And what a profound truth that is. This man is a prophet. And so it begs to ask us the question, what profound truth am I missing because I'm blinded by the stubbornness of my pride and tradition? How, how is those things preventing me from seeing Jesus in a greater light. 
Well, the Pharisees, they miss it. They miss it completely. Um, they're, they're intrigued, but rather than go to Jesus and find the truth, they're asking this man for his version of the truth. And the man states truthfully, but it's all he knows, that he is a prophet. So my brothers and sisters, as we close out today, I just encourage you to go to Jesus. Go to the Word and see the truth of Jesus. Don't rely on another's opinion. Don't rely on a book or a preacher. Go to the Word, led by the Spirit, and find the truth and the light of who Jesus is. Let's close in prayer. Oh, Jesus, thank you um, again for just how your word provides insight. Lord, so often we're like the Pharisees. We're caught up in our traditions. We fail to see the truth of what's right before us. We're caught up and preoccupied with so many other things that we can't see what's right before us and the miracles that you are doing right before our very eyes. Lord, like this man, Father, we need people to speak the truth that you are an amazing Father. And Jesus, you are an amazing Savior, that you are the prophet. You are the one sent by God to bring forth the word. Um, and so thank you for what you have spoken, Jesus, and thank you for what you have done. We pray this in your name. Amen. Ready? Break it.